Peace and blessings be appointed to all my brothers and sisters out there. It is your brother Jehoshiah Israel back in the sanctuary for this Monday. What is it? Monday. It's Monday, November 18th, 2019. All glory given to the Most High Yah. Be grateful for it. His time. Be grateful for his understanding. Be grateful for his peace. Be grateful for his mercy. Be grateful for his long suffering. Be grateful for his enduring spirit to shine on all of us. All glory given to the Most High Yah, for he is the only one who is worthy. Peace and blessings be appointed to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. You are now with your brother Jehoshaphat Israel here in the sanctuary for this November and. Before we get into ministering and preaching and teaching for tonight, I just want to say two things, family. I just want to say two things. Like, you, I have my allotted time, my sanctioned time here in the sanctuary, and I have to reveal myself. My father told me it's been a while since you didn't seen my face, and I have to reveal myself here in the sanctuary for this day. But everything all is well, family. I got my little bottle of water here, and I'm ready to get into ministering and preaching. What I learned with people this week, family, is that some people, they're never happy unless they're complaining. Now, you know, family, last week when we were here in the sanctuary, I said, complaining is a sin brother that's a sin brother that is a sin brother don't curse yourself brother don't curse yourself sister don't be like them other people but i have learned family that when you when you deal with people some people they're only happy unless they are complaining family and you could take it upon yourself you could be like well here, here go Joy. He'd be like, well, you know, Jehosa, I'm having a rough day. Everything bad. And then you try to tell Joey something good. You try to tell Jermaine something good. You try to tell Bobby something good. But his soul, it doesn't feed into that. I'm sorry, family. My, I guess my camera got clicked off. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean for that to happen. But it seems like with people that they're never satisfied unless they're complaining. And I do not want my brothers and sisters to give out to that spirit. You say something good, they say something bad. You're trying to keep your spirits up, trying to bring out joy off of any situation. Anything that might befall you in your life, you're going to try to bring some joy out of it. But you're dealing with these people out here in this world. And, and it seems like they fester, family. They fester on all that misery, all that suffering, all that bad stuff that could happen to them in their life. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a depression spirit that they have on them, family. But it seems like my, my other brothers and sisters out here in this world who give into that spirit is no different than what the word tells us all family the word says that out of your mouth proceeds life and death my other brothers and my other sisters up over there all they got is death coming out in their mouth and they feed on it family if my brother ain't sitting up over there talking bad about himself, talking bad about his situations, talking bad about all the things that could happen to him in his day, he's not eating, family. He's not eating. Some people need that to eat, family, to give them life, family. And when I was, I ain't saying no names, family. I didn't say any names. But it seems like they, it's not just a point of festering off of these things, family. They need that depression. They need that spirit of sitting there complaining family i mean anything 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 family you sit there you tell them oh, well it's a nice pretty day outside well you, you know i shoved my shoe in some and and then this happened and this and this and this and this. that's all they have on their soul family you don't have to be with these people i found out with myself is that i now we're supposed to test the spirit we're supposed to, family. We're supposed to test people to see what their spirit is. And I found out that evil talks to itself, family. Yeah, my camera, it just keeps on going out. I'm doing something wrong. I'm sorry, family. I'm not trying to do that deliberately. I'm not doing that deliberately. So I just hold the camera. And maybe it's the timer that's on the what you call it. I don't know. 
But I'm finding out with people is that they fester on it. And you know, your brother Jehoshaphat, Israel, I can't be hanging around a lot of people like that because I'll be testing people's spirit. And some of my brothers and sisters, they got that spirit of depression on them. They got that spirit of sadness to where they're festering in. You could tell them anything you want. You can try to lift their they feelings all the way up to Zion, but they still eat family it's inside of their heart family they eat on what comes out of their mouth family and all they have on their mouth is more depression and more sadness and more heartaches and more breaks and more bad things that's what they feed on uh, me a person like me i can only feed on what is good what is correct what is right what 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 is joy what what is what is the good spirit what is the word of god what did he tell us to do what he want us to do we supposed to have the word of God. It's like with the word of God, family, we're supposed to bind them on the tablets of our heart. We're supposed to write them at our door posts. We're supposed to have them all over our walls and our house. We even supposed to have them on the tassels of our clothes because God don't want us to forget what we better be doing for him. All the righteous that we have to live, all of his laws, his statutes, his commandments, his limitations, his judgments, every single thing of how he wants us to live our life. He wants us fully develop in the word. When we're in the grocery store, we're supposed to be saying something about the word. When we're driving in our cars, we're supposed to be saying something about the word. When we're picking up the kids and we at the kids in the school, when we're in the post office, when we're at the Mickey D's, when we're at the McDonald's, anywhere a child of God might be or might reside, we have to, family. We have to, family. We have to profess his words. That's what he wants from us. And I learned with being around people, they can only take so much of me because that's all I'm talking about. God is good. God is great. God did this. God going to do this. God already has done done this god has promised that this for us and that's already too much for a man a woman to handle and they shy away from me and i shy away from them because i see evil inside of them talking to it evil evil speaks to other evil people if you got five people up in the group family this evil evil is talking to all them other five family that evil is saying something to it's just a backward and a forced change of evil the spirits that rest on that man or that woman and i learned i can't even be be i can't i can't be everybody friend family i cannot family i cannot because of what the spirit that they have inside of they self family whatever they have inside of they self whatever spirit that they have given in you cannot hide family what is on the inside of a man or on the inside of a woman for it will profess itself through the lips family of a man or a woman and i'll be listening to them talk family i'll be listening to them family and when i'm listening to them family I hear their spirit, family, and I cannot merge that. I cannot mix that. I can't intertwine that with my spirit. Not everybody is supposed to be our friend, family. It's not family. Not everybody. I learned, family, that, and I know I got it in, in ministering and preaching for today because, you know, anything that we preach over your father, he makes me write it down, family, to go over it correctly, family. And I got my sanction time. I'm here in the sanctuary. Your father told me to get up here and get in the sanctuary and preach. Well, damn it, this is what I'm doing, family. And you know, your brother, I'm going to get a joy and a pleasure to profess my heart while I'm doing it, family. For it is the word of the for, for living God, family. The ever living God is his words, family, of how he wants us to conduct ourselves, how he wants us to be discreet, how are we supposed to carry ourselves in this life. So I'm going to get a pleasure at it. I learned through this week, family, not everybody can be your friend like that, family, because so many different people are still caught up in that world. That world is calling them. That's all. Anything that comes out of their mouth is something that the world wants, something that the world needs, something, a world, some worldly problem or worldly stress or worldly strife, family. I can't do it, family. Not everybody can be your friend. I learned this week, family, that only the only people that's really going to help you in your life is children of God family that's the only the only people that's going to be nice to you the only people that have a kind spirit the only people that's going to try to help you out in your life and when you call up in trials or, or, or struggles or you have a problem the only person that's going to come to your assistance is another child of God family that's the only ones that can ever help us family you looking you look into your other brothers and sisters out here in this world that that don't have any faith 
that don't have any any goodness inside of them that are not walking on the right path of life they can't help you family the only people that's going to be kind to you the only people that's going to love you and um try to lift you up family are are children of the most high god those are the only people family the only people that's going to help you in this life so family this week family and i know family I know it was hard for some of my brothers and sisters out there because last week, family, it was keep your keep your peace, family. Keep your peace, family. That was hard, family, because we were being tested on every single thing that that we go over here in the sanctuary. If you listen to me, family, you're going to be you're going to be tested on all. I, I'm not God, family. I'm no by no means. I ain't got no power like that. I'm just a man, family. But God is going to test you on these things. If you take your time out here and sit in the sanctuary and learn, family, you will be tested by God on every single thing that I preach over for this is not a game, family. People, I'll be hearing people all the time. They sit there and they tell me, well, well, uh, Jehosa, 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 why does the brother, why does the Bible contradict itself, brother? Why? But Jehosa, why? Because, brother, you don't have any faith, brother. You don't have any faith at all in the word of God, family. This is what separates the true believers and those who, who are straddling the fence and that are backsliders and, and those who want to go back into this word. We do not doubt the word of God, for it is the living truth of his greatness. It is his greatness, family. It's his greatness, family. We don't doubt that. So when you hear your other brothers and sisters out here in this world and they be like, well, the Bible say this and I don't understand. It's because they don't have faith, family. If they have faith, family, they would never doubt God, family. They would never doubt him, family. At all, family. Not even a little bit. They wouldn't even doubt the Masiac, the Masseuse, the precious lamb, the son of God, the word of the ever living God, family. They would never doubt him at all if they built, if they took out the time to build up his faith. And the only way you can build up your faith is to do what God is asking you to do, family. And there's so many different things that God wants all from all of us so we can live and live a good life and to be blessed, family. He has set before us curses and blessings family that's all you getting out of god family i'm sorry family <laughs> it's what it is family he has already said before us curses and blessings and so many of our people choose to be cursed family because they don't want to learn god all the way that's your job and his job and their job to do family that's not God's job to do, family. Life is so precious, family. I started my, I started my Friday, my well, my Sunday. I started it being so grateful to your father that he has given me life because I know God. He just doesn't give everybody life like that, family. The durations of our life. If you look up the death toll here in America, no, as far as the world, family. Is it no? No, it's here in America, family. Here in America, if you look at the death toll, family, every single year, three hundred and fifty thousand people die. That should let you know that God is not just giving people life like that. He just doesn't give life to everybody like that. Does some people slip through the cracks? Do some wicked people and sinners slip through the cracks? And they be all old and evil, but it's not a lot of them, family. It is not, family. It is not. But let us go ahead and get into preaching. Shouts out, family. Shouts out to all my brothers and sisters who will be coming to the nine o'clock prayer hour tonight. And, you know, family, you know, we start our weeks, you, you know... Whatever he gives me, family, I'm going to run with it, family. I'm going to run with it, whatever he gives me. And our week to this, this our week right here, our week that's coming up, family. Today is Monday. This is the week to give, to give your time, to give your peace, to give your patience, to give your understanding, to give your monetary gain, not just to your loved ones, not just your understanding. Not not just to your family, not just to your friends, but to anyone who would ask you for help. So to my brothers and sisters out here in this world, this is the week to give, family. Not just your monetary gain of your finances, not just your peace, family, not just your understanding, your wisdom, your kind heart, but all of it, family. 
all of it, family. Every single thing that you have. This is the week to give, family. I want my brothers and sisters to be blessed, family. I truly do, family. I want you to be blessed and I want you to have everything that God has in store from you. It's just a shame that a lot of people are not willing to do what they have to do. It's all this stuff, family. We have to do it, family. We have to do it for us to be blessed. Remember, he has set before us curses and blessings, family. And it is up to us to learn every single thing that we have to know about God. God is not going to bend your arm behind your back and be like, oh, come here, Bobby. Come here. Didn't I tell you, boy, you need to be praying and being at the night? He's not going to do that, family. He's not going to sit Susan down and tell her that you better learn me. This is all by choice, family, just like the faith that you have to build up inside of your heart, family. So let's go ahead and get into this is the week to give, family, to give what you got, family. What do you got, family? You ain't got the money, brother. Give the love, family. Get a love, family. You ain't you. OK, brother, you can't help them people. But can you be honest with them? Can you give them your integrity? Can you give them your your sweetness? Can you give them your kind heart, family? Can you give them your genuine spirit? This is the week to give, family. Give what you have, family. I want my brothers and sisters out there in the world to dig low in their own I can't even say your financial bank, family, yourself, family, your individuality of who you are. I want you to dig low, family, for these people, family, so God can bless us all in abundance, family. And I know some of my brothers and sisters out there, they already tell me, well, you know, Jehosa, well, I ain't got the I ain't got the money part, but you sure enough got some love. Jehosa, Jehosa, I ain't I ain't got no money, Jehosa. Well, you got some understanding. You do. You, you you got some sincere heart inside of your heart to be able to relay and give to other people, family. You have this inside of yourself to give. Give generously. Have a family, if you ain't got no money, damn, do you have a generous do you have a generous spirit, family? Do you, family, do you have a kind heart? Do you have love? Well, give that out, family. Give that out to those who need it in this world, family. I want you to cover the whole gamma, the whole 365 degrees of how you can give, family. Give from the heart. If you don't feel like giving, okay, I can understand that. I'm not going to knock you for that, family. I will not, family. But I want you to be blessed because I know your father has set before us all curses and blessings, family. He has, family. And he wants us to give. So this is the week to give, not just to our family, not just to our friends, not just to our, our associates, but those in this world who need us. Maybe they need the generous of your heart, family. Maybe they do need a dollar or two, brother. Maybe they might need 50 cent, brother. You know what I'm saying? Might need a dollar bill, brother. But I want my brothers and sisters out there in the world to give, family. To give what you have. Maybe it's just the time. Maybe it's just the patience. Maybe it's just the peace, family. But I want my brothers and sisters to give in this week, family. Now let's go ahead and get into ministering and preaching for this night. All glory be given to the Most High Yah. Peaces, peace and blessings be appointed to all my brothers and sisters out there in this world, family, for we serve a good, great God, family, that loves us, that cares for us, that thinks about us, that wants to see us doing good, family. But we're going to have to give up all the things that we, we have to, and that's just being kind-hearted and sweet. And as you see in this world, not a lot of people are willing to do those things, family. They're not willing to be sweet or have a kind heart or even give to other or even be able to come down off their pedestal and put somebody else above themselves, family. They're not willing to do that. So how can God bless them, family? I'm asking you, brother. I'm asking you, sister. How can God bless them if they're not even willing to give the generosity of their heart, family, to love, family? Your master, Yeshua, you call him Jesus Christ. Your Jesus Christ wants you to love, family. And as you see in this world and as you see with your people, they don't want to do that. But at the same time, they would fix their face to say that they love the Lord, but they don't want to do nothing that he's asking. They would fix their face to say that they honor the most high God, but they're not willing to do any of the things that he is asking us to do, family. So let's go ahead and get into ministering and preaching for tonight. And 
you know, my brothers and sisters, you know I love you, and I hope that you come to this 9 o'clock per hour to be in spirit, praying with all of the rest of the saints across this great world, family, and in unison, family, to pray on the behalf of our families and the behalf, the behalf of so many different people who don't have nobody to pray for them, family. Come, come with us. And we're going to pray for them and we're going to pray for each other. And we all throw your hands in the air for you know you are blessed by the most high God himself. We all going to be blessed together, family. So let's go ahead and get into scriptures for tonight. Yah loves when you or me are fair in our dealing. He loves that, family. He loves that. Well, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, brother, tell me why, God. Tell me why. Tell me why. It's easy. It's easy, family, because you serve a God that he's good, family. Okay, okay. I can't say, I can't, I can't physically, I can physically sit here and say that I'm good. But that would be a lie because there is only one who is good. And that is God, family. He's the only one who is good, family. He's good. He's fair. He's honest. He's all of those multitudes of different things, family, that evolves around righteousness, family. And he likes it. God is right, family. When he sends a person to hell, family, he's going to tell them why. And when after God tells that person why they have to burn for all eternity, they won't be able to argue with him about it. Not because he cast them in the lake, not because he sent them down to the pit. It's because they themselves know the truth and what they have done with their lives. Your God is the God of honesty, of integrity of love, of peace, of understanding. And he loves it, family. He loves it when his children are honest. We don't have to put no back. We don't have to, well, you know, I know this is, it's only worth $500, but I'm going to try to get $750 out of it. I'm going to try to get $750 out of it. You tell me right there if that's honest, family. You tell me if that's properly being honest, no different than their father, their father would be honest with them, family. You know it is not, family. It is not, family. Not by no means, family. And all of our dealings, family, all of our dealings, family. He's seen family. He's seen something that belonged to his neighbor. It was outside of his house. He went in and he took in the UPS. He's seen the UPS package family at the curb family. It was far away from his neighbor house family. His neighbor stayed three down, three houses down. What did he do family? He took the package in his house because it wasn't on his neighbor's Per porch family that's dishonesty family dishonesty family remember curses and blessings in which he said before us that man will be cursed for taking his neighbor's property family he wanted that man to say well you know you know this looks like this looks like billy's package what is it doing out on the curb let me go walk this over to the to billy house uh, uh billy 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 who is it who is it i shall never jump uh, oh, what's up, Jeff? Uh, Billy, I seen your, I seen your pa your UPS package. It was, it was down the street. I, I just wanted to deliver it to you. That's being honest, family. That's what your father wants from all of us. Once more, once more again, this is the week to give, family. Get low, family. Get low in your pocketbooks, family. Get low in your heart, family. Get, ho get low with your love, family. Get low with. You having that honest spirit, that honest, willing spirit to try to help somebody, family. Maybe it be your time, family. Maybe it be your patience, family. Maybe it be your peace, family. Maybe it be a dollar bill, but whatever it might be, family. Whatever it might be, family. I want you to give, family. Now, back to back to your father wanting you to be honest. He wants you to be honest, family. He does, family. By all means, fam, them other people up over there that's doing that dishonest gain and they have the, the, the flashy things right now and they're looking like, oh, well, this job sucker, Tucky, this, this sucker, uh, you know, I got I, I got him for X amount of dollars and this and this and he don't know about it. He don't. That's dishonest, family. Your father does not want his children to be dishonest because he is an honest God, family. He is the honest Lord of hosts by all of his means, and he want his children to be as the same as he is. Now, what does scripture have to say about it? 
Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. He takes a pleasure, family. He takes a pleasure when he sees you doing right. Why is that for Jehosa? Because he himself is right, family. God can never be wrong, family, on nothing. He is never wrong on nothing, family, at all, family. He is honest, family. And to be dishonest to God is an abomination. What is an abomination, Jehosa? What, what is abomination? I, I, I wrote it out. A thing that causes disgust or hatred. By, by people being dishonest, it's a thing that causes disgust and hatred. He, am I saying that he hates them? No, I'm not saying that he hates them. I'm saying that he hates the way that they act, family. It's a part of them that is disgusting and grotesque to him because he is honest, family. What does the scripture say? Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So if you want to please him, family, if you want to please him with your actions on how you conduct yourself, family, the best way to do it is to be honest and fair in all of your dealings. We don't have to get over on nobody, family. Remember, curses and blessings. If you try to get over on them people, he's going to curse you and what you're doing and what you have, family. You're going to get the whole f the package. You're going to get the full package of all these damn curses that can be delivered to you, family, just on dishonesty. And then not only, my brother, not only, my sister, do you receive his curses, family, you look no different than a b abomination before his eyes. Jehosa, what is an abomination? A thing that causes disgust or hatred. You you look disgusting to him, and he probably hates you. And and remember, family, you're in the sanctuary with your brother Jehosa Yah Israel. I serve the real God. I'm not gonna give you some fake God. I'm not gonna give you some false God. I'm gonna give you the supreme being, the Almighty Creator, family, the real God. That's what's wrong with my people for so long. They've been fed the fake God for so long. They can't even distinguish between the real and the fake anymore, family. It's a damn shame. But as you be here in the sanctuary with your brother Israel, we're going to we're going to we're going to reveal to you the real God, family. What is he really like? What is he really asking of us, family? Family, don't be like the people of long ago in my life, family. Today he wanted me, he wanted me, but I, I didn't have time, family. He wanted me to tell y'all what a prophet is. He wanted me to write all these things down on a piece of paper and then read it to you, family. I didn't have time. I was too busy. I didn't have time to do that, family. So I'll roughly go over to you what a prophet is. What is a prophet, Jehosa? Somebody that's going to tell you the truth, family. What is a prophet, Jehosa? Somebody is going to tell you the things that you're not going to want to hear. What is a prophet, Jehosa? Somebody that's going to try to warn you before it's too late. Now, since I was a little boy all the way till now, family, people want to listen to me until it's too late, family. They, they do, family. They don't want to heed my warnings until it's too late. What does that sound like to you, family? What does it sound like to it? I don't have to say anything, family. I don't have to put no names or try to make myself look bigger or better. I'm not even saying that, family. But what I'm saying to you, family, is ever since I was a little boy, family, I would be sitting there telling people things, family, and they would not heed my warning until hell hits the fan, family. Until they're put in a position to where they cannot claw or climb themselves out of that pit of what they put themselves in. But their brother Israel was right there telling them, hey man, hey, you don't need to do that. Hey, nah, this is the way you need to go about it. Nah, that don't even sound good, my brother. You don't need to be doing all of that. Trying to warn them before the bad thing, excuse me, before the bad things happen. No different. Then the prophets of old, they tried to warn our people before things got bad. And then when they got bad, they start crying out to the Oh, 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 uh, uh, oh, Isaiah, Isaiah, please, Elias, please tell me, tell me what am I supposed But by that time, it's already too late, family. It's already too late, family. Your brother is here to give you the truth now, family. 
Your brother is here to do every single thing that our father put before my plate now, family. While you can, while it's still time to work real good in his orchards and to be blessed. Okay, let's keep on moving forward. So we covered that. Your father, he's not dishonest, family. I told you, them people that's burning in hell, family, they can't even, they can't even argue about it, family. They can't even argue about it. When he sent him down there, they knew how bad it was, but they still themselves couldn't argue against God. Why, family? Why, why is it that you allowed me to go to hell? They can't argue. He going to tell them why, family, off of the things that they were doing. And once more again, we serve the real God, not the fake one. We worship the real God, not the fake one, not the pretend one, and not the one that the world made up to have people falling in the pit going to hell, family. I don't understand our people, family. I don't, family. How can you, I, if you serve the real God, you are limited on the things that you can do. I hear people say they love God all the time and they do whatever the hell they want to do, family. Whatever the hell they want to do. And at the, with the same facial expressions, they will sit and tell you that I love God and I worship him. If you love God and you worshiped him, you yourself would be different. You would act different. You would be discreet. You would carry yourself with love and peace and compassion. These are all traits that our father wants us to display in this life. Okay, let's move forward to the next one. I can put my initials on that. Don't be trying to don't be trying to be dishonest, family. Uh, on any on anything, brother. On anything that you might be doing. Today is 11 18 2019. Okay, when pride comes, then comes shame. But what but with the humble is wisdom. Okay, I jump, family. I jump, family. My bad, family. My bad. I jump. If we think with a argumentative mind, what would happen? So I'm asking you, family, if you live your life and you walk around in these streets of these worlds at, at your job, at your at, at your home, with your with your family, with your friends, with your with your associates, with your neighbors, if you carry a argumentative mind, what will happen to us, family? I'm asking you, family. What will happen to you? We already talked about last week how is it, it's a sin to sit there and complain. I, we're bumping the game up now. What happens when you have an argumentative mind? What happens when you are always right and you're never wrong? What happens when the, the first thing that comes to you Besides, it's no peace, but an uh, argumentative type spirit. What happens to a man or a woman? Let's see what scripture have to say about it. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversities of the unfaithful will destroy them. Their same perversities, family, of that same Argative spirit of always being right, never being wrong. You can't tell me nothing. I know what's right. Whatever you're saying, it doesn't even sound right. The first thing that they want to do is argue about it, family. They want to argue about it, family. What happens to them? When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. And the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversities of the unfaithful will destroy them. Their same actions of that argumentative mind will only cause calamity. That's the only thing that will ever befall them, family. And any situation that they might be in and they try to have a, a, a resolution, family, whatever the outcome that it might be, family, it's not going to be good, family. It's not, family. We're supposed to have a peaceful equations of the problem, family. We, we're supposed to. We're supposed to step to the battlefield of whatever might be the, 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 the problem in our life with peace first, family. Don't get me wrong, family. Now, you know there's a time and a place for everything. But your father, he himself, he wants you to have a peace inside of your heart so you can get a better resolution off of whatever that, that, that ills you, my brother. Whatever troubles you, my sister. So the, the what comes with them, they're so damn prideful, family. God doesn't want us to have pride because after that same pride that they have, he's going to shame them, family. We ourselves, we have to be humble, family, to show forth. If you can be humble in a situation, that will show that will show out 
wisdom, family. It will show wisdom because you're trying to have a righteous outcome in it, family. Their anger, of their aggression, of their madness, family, will destroy them and will only hinder them and make the, the resolution of the problem that they try to, to come to, 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 to solve. It's only going to be havoc and melee for the resolution of the problem, family. So what does scripture say? When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversities of the unfaithful will destroy them, family. All they anger, all their aggression. They so damn quick to fight. They so damn quick to argue. You cannot tell them nothing. They are never wrong, family. Does Sister, does that sound like she's trying to be humble? Brother, I, I'm just asking up over here. He's never wrong, family. He's going to shame his own self. God is going to bring shame on that man. And he's going to bring shame on that woman for their prideful spirit, family. Okay, let's move forward to the next one. I can put my initials on that gladly. Okay, it has been said, you make your bed and you lie in it. You can't save a person from their own ways. Family, you know the old saying, you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with ticks. You know, you know what, you know what grandpa told you. You make, what, what did papa say? You make your bed, you lie in it. You cannot save everybody, family. You can't, it's like, you can't save a person that doesn't want to be saved, family. Remember when we was talking about last week about how, how life has a set things that it wants to do to you. And then the devil, he also has set things that he wants to do to you. And God, he wants to spare you and save you from all of that. It's no different than what I'm talking about, family. What did I write down? It has been said, you make your bed and you lie in it. You can't save you can't save a person from their own ways. We cannot save everybody, family. We can only look after. We can only lift up. We can only try to help those who need our help, family. We can't save everybody, family. Your brother Israel, Jehoshaphat Israel, know damn well, family. I can't save everybody, family. I only got a, I only got a handful. I, well, it's not a handful of people. Maybe it's a whole gymnasium family or a whole football people. But I can only save them family because the other people on the other side is not going to they don't want to be saved family. So look at your life family and all the times that you don't try to assist. You didn't try to help somebody out of the, the, the trials, the tribulations of life, the troubles family. And even though you help them, they're still doing bad now that brother and that sister is still doing bad now i'm sorry i'll read the scripture but i gotta go run up i gotta go run and, and look on dinner real quick family i'm sorry family the righteous of the upright will deliver them but the unfaithful will be caught by their own ways. This is why you always see them getting in trouble. This is why all the decisions that be happening to them they only have a, a bad outcome or whatever it was family Whatever was happening to your brothers or your cousins or your sisters or your dads or your moms, your aunties, your uncles, your nieces, some of y'all, your children. Even, even though, family, even though, family, you tried, family, you, you gave it your best to try to lift this person up, family, but you see that they still failed. Why is that, family? It's because you yourself can't save everybody, family. You can't, family. You will drive yourself crazy up over there trying to save all them people in your family. Whatever that they did, they're going to have to pay for that, family. They're going to have to suffer. You don't have to, you don't have to jump in the line and, and, and be the Superman. And, and, well, you know, Timmy, you know, I'm going to help you. You, you know, I'm going to help you with all of this. Uh-uh, family. We're not supposed to do that, family. What do you mean, Jehosa? It's my sister and I love her. You shouldn't have to, to have the same faith befall you because your sister wants to be foolish and want to be stupid and go out there and be a jackass and live a rough life. Now you want to try to block the hand of God? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You want to try to save her out of her own stew, her own soup that she has made. 
And now you're going to have to taste from that. You're going to have to eat that. You're going to have to eat that pie. You, she baked it in the oven. You're going to have to eat that pie. You have to eat that pie with her. The brother was sitting there suing his misery and his suffering and a damn pot on the stove of all his bad decisions that he had did. And you want to jump in front of the train and try to help him. You're going to have to eat that soup with him. We can't save everybody. I got to pause it real quick. I'll be right back, family. So your, your people, they just got out of jail and you try to lift them up and they just go back down the same road over again. You can play that game all you want trying to save them. But it, you know, just like I know, they're not going to try to lift their own selves up. We cannot save everybody. Sister, you went up over there. You 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 gotta you gotta meet him with the boss, sister. You gotta meet him to, to meet the boss and everything and to shake his hand to get the job and everything. She don't even want to get the job, Pamela. She don't even want to get the job, sister, or even put in the work. You cannot save everybody. You can't you can't throw out your time of your peace, of your compassion on those who are just going to use it up and still be back in the same pot all over again what did the scripture say that supper was good family i can't wait to get in my, my dinner time family Woo! we're gonna tear it up family we is family okay where were we at the righteous of the upright will deliver them but the unfaithful will be caught by their own lust the unfaithful my brothers the own all that stuff that they was lusting after for them is going to catch them up and you cannot spare them and you cannot save them. Or if you try to, you're going to stand in the firing line just like them. God didn't say that. Well, well, you know, Jehoshaphat, son, I need you to try to save everybody. He never said that. He never told you. What's your name? Where you live at? You know what I'm saying? What's your name? Where you live at? He didn't tell you to do that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say. You tried to help him one time, and then you seen them down on their luck with all of their misfortunes all over again. Why is that for? The righteous of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their own lust. If he, if he didn't go out there doing that, he wouldn't be hurting now. If she didn't take herself up over there and was doing those things, she would not be hurting now over it. You yourself cannot save everyone family and i'm talking about those that are in our family and our loved ones i cut people off family they think i'm so damn cruel and stuff they be like oh you so damn cruel no i know what the word said and i can keep on helping you all day bobby uh, jimmy i can keep on helping you all day you know what i'm saying daniel i can help you all damn day but daniel's lust is going to have him slipping and have him in a bad situation. I don't have to I don't have to sit up there and stand in the firing line with my cousin or my homie Daniel because he want to be a dumbass. You don't have to do that. Let's move forward because I don't think y'all feeling me. Some of y'all, y'all going to go back up over there. Y'all going to be feeling sorry. Y'all going to be feeling sorry for your people. And then all that bad stuff that's going to happen to them is going to happen to you. And then you're going to look up. Oh, Jehovah told me this was going to happen if I was listening to my brother and I would be going to it. And he's still on the couch, Jehovah. He's still eating up all my chicken cereal, Jehovah. See, I told you, you bought him brand new shoes, a brand new outfit everything he never applied himself and now you don't even want him you don't even want him on the couch family he's up in the attic now you didn't sister you don't even want her in the attic now she's in the garage now, you, now you, you, this is that gonna be your life you gonna be constantly taking care of the next person all right i'll leave it alone i don't think y'all feeling me i don't think y'all hearing me okay let's move to the next one okay curses of the lord's wrath trade places with people you cannot stop a curse family you can't stop no curses family a curse is just like a blessing family it's like it's like when god put his blessings on the train you know just like i know can't nothing stop a train family you seen they put a they put a diesel on the track family the diesel the, the train ran the damn diesel over family you seen they lined up three Three army tanks, family. Three army tanks, family. The new ones, family. That train plowed through all them damn army tanks like it was nothing. You cannot stop a curse or a blessing. But I'm here today to tell you, family, you can't stop no curses, family. You can't stop that, family. You can't be crying out to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I don't know. No, when he finished, family, 
Maybe he'll listen to you after that. Remember, we serve the real God, family. I'm going to tell you about the real God, family, not the fake one, family. Oh, God, please, God, please, I did good. Oh, can you please stop? Oh, can you please stop beating me up, please? Can you give me back my legs? Oh, please. When he's finished doing all of that, then that's when he's going to stop. The, the curse has to finally run to the end of it, family. Brother, he was over there getting cursed in January. Maybe God wanted him to be cursed till September, family. He really has to put on his spiritual thinking cap, family, and sit up over there and do good for them eight, nine months to stop that curse, family. You cannot stop a curse. Well, well, maybe if I pray long enough, then God won't God release and he won't be cursing. No, no, it's no, family. When he put that curse on that train track, family, it has to do whatever that it was going to do until the very end of it, family. That that I don't know about y'all, family, but that scares the hell out of me, family. I serve the real God, family. That scares the hell out of me, family. What does the scripture say? Curses of the Lord's wrath trade places with people. You cannot stop a curse. Do you know curses trade places, family? That, uh, I, that's the only way you, you, it can stop, family. It traded. It went from one person to the next person to the next person. You cannot stop a curse, family. You cannot stop it, family. What does scripture have to say about it? The righteous is delivered from trouble and it comes to the wicked instead. Can you imagine that, family? As long as long as you being good, brother. Sister, are you hearing me? As long as you being good, sister, all your troubles is going to go to somebody else. All that bad stuff that was supposed to be happening to you is going to go to somebody else, family. You cannot stop a curse, family. You cannot, family. It has to run. It, a curse is like a sickness, family. If we know sin is like a sickness, curses is like sickness too, family. How long did it take that brother to get over get over the, 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 the fever, family? How long did it take her to get over the flu? How long did it take him to get over a cold? It took two weeks, family. It took a month, family. Your brother, I'm not playing with these curses with the most high y'all. I'm not doing that, family. By no means, family. And if you stay righteous, all that bad stuff, all that troubles in life, family, whatever it might have been, however that it was going to unfold on, on you in your life, it'll jump straight to the next person, family. I hope you know it's your enemies, too. You know what I'm saying? That, that had me doing extra. I know I hate to get sidetracked, family, but I know that all my enemies that hate me so much, the only reason why they hate me is because they hate God, family. I know that your father has promised all the curses that befall the Egyptians that happen to them will happen to all my enemies. That's what, sister, that's what will happen to all your enemies as long as you stay in your righteousness. As long as you stay loving him, you have honest scales and measures. You, 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 you're walking in your love, your peace, your understanding, and you're trying to be kind, generous with your heart, family. Not being biased and prejudiced when it comes to loving people and spreading around love, family. Uh-uh, family. Uh-uh, family. But as long as you stay righteous, as long as you stay with your love and your kind heart and your spirit, doing all the things that you know that are right, for there is wrong and there is right, family. You doing all that you right. Those same troubles in your life will be will be given to somebody else. L let's read what the rest of scripture has to say. The righteous is delivered from trouble and it comes to the wicked instead. Don't that sound good, brother? You know what I'm saying? Don't that sound good, sister? Don't that sound like you ain't got to worry about none of them problems or none of them goings on as long as you, yourself, be right, do right, and do good to others? Okay, let's move forward. I can put my full initials on that one. You cannot stop a curse. I'm trying to tell you, family... They already sick living in sin, family. They already sick in sin, family. And then you be wondering why all that stuff be happening to them. Because a lot of stuff was supposed to happen to me and your brothers and your sisters. But God ain't going to let us go through that. Because we're trying to maintain our righteousness. So it just jumps on all them other peoples. And it's going to tear them down, family, until it's finished, family. Then it's just going to jump on somebody else, family. It's sad, family. It's sad, family. We don't need no curses jumping on us, family. We don't, family. And we can't get 
rid of it until it's gone, family. It's like the damn flu, family. It's going to take every single thing that you got, family. Your mind and your peace and your understanding, too. And then leave you all all sitting up there sick, family, because you hurting because you went through all of that. Nah, nah. We're going to miss all of these curses, family. Okay, the next one. Oh, I didn't finish, family. I didn't finish. I'm sorry. The righteous is delivered from the trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. Not all will be lifted out of harm's way. Not everybody will be lifted out of harm's way, family. Some people will be going through a whole lot of stuff, and it is not a damn thing that they can do about it because you have me and your brothers and sisters over here that are living our lives right, and them curses got to go somewhere, family. You can't stop a curse, family, and they already given in to their sins, so guess what? Guess who gets that? Get all of that trouble. All some people call it bad luck. I'm telling you, family, it's trouble. Guess who gets to get all that trouble happen to them in their life, family? Lights turned out, got an eviction, got fired on the job, got arrested, and broke their leg, broke their arm. Now they sick in the hospital. All them troubles, families, Shaniqua and Antoinette and, and, and Joey and, and little Bobby and, and little Ray Ray is looking to kick their ass. They get all them troubles, family. They got all of that coming their way, family. They can't get out of it, family. I feel sorry for little Tatiana. You know what I'm saying? I feel sorry for little Ray Ray, but little Ray Ray's going to get beat down, family. He got them troubles coming. Okay, move, we're moving to the next one, family. I can put my initials on this one. Did I jump again? I did jump. Not all will be lifted out of harm's way. What is what is what, what do you mean, Jehosa? What do you mean? We're gonna be saved, family. When I told you, family, when I was preaching over it every last week, family, everybody has a point to when they need to be saved, family. Everybody, family, you'd be like, well, he has millions of dollars. The millions of dollars is not gonna save him. Oh, Jehosa, she work out and she does Taibo and she does karate and she does yoga. That yoga and that Taibo and that black belt ain't going to save her. Oh, Jehosa, he at the gym, Jehosa, and he can bench 400 pounds, Jehosa. His strength is not going to save him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a day when God has to come and redeem that man or redeem that woman. What do you call it? Him saving them, family. Family, even the wicked people, family, even they need to be saved, family. Even they, family. Everybody that lives on the face of this earth that, that breathes air, family, oxygen, family. Ah, they need to be saved, family. Not all, family. Not all will be lifted out of harm's way. So when you hear all those going ons and all those bad occurrences happening to those people, this is why. Okay, now, where were we at? Okay, let's jump down to the next one. Okay, the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, righteous will be delivered. What did your brother say to you, family? Your righteousness, your peace... Your understanding, and you gonna need you. You're gonna need a day when when somebody needs to come save you, family. But by you having your righteousness, by you having your love, your love walk, your peaceful, tranquil spirit, family, you walking in honesty. That's when God is gonna deliver you. That's when God is gonna save you, family. But you have to keep walking in your love, family, walking in your peace. The tranquility of your mind, family, you're going to have to keep that, family, because everybody has a day to where they need to be saved. But if they don't have love on them, if they're not walking in peace, if they have, if they trying to argue about it, they want to argue about it all the damn time, family, they're going to have the day to where they need to be saved and they will not be saved, family. They will. It, it doesn't work like that. Once more again, family, a lot of people. They be thinking in their head, they be like, well, God is so good and God is understanding and God is peace and God is, but God ain't saving everybody, family. God ain't loving everybody. God ain't listening to everybody and God, he's not going to save them like that. He's not blessing everybody, family. It's a lot of stuff. 
and 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 you know it's the people who say that they know God. They don't know the right God, family. They don't know the real God, family. Or he will be saving them, family, and he will be blessing them, family. He's not doing none of that, family. What was written? The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through the knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. Through your righteousness, God will come and deliver you in your time of need, family. He's not going to sit there and see all that bad stuff was about to happen to you and he don't come deliver you, family. The righteousness that you do on a, each day, here go, here go it again. People think that they can just live life. They serve the fake one. You know what I'm saying? They serve the fake God. Live life. And they don't have to do anything to get all God's goodness. Or then they're like so many different other people and they only get half, family. They get half, family. They get half. They get half of a blessing. They get a full curse. All the good things that he want to help them. He going to halfway save them. Uh-uh, family. We said a real God. He going to save us all the way, family. He going to bless us all the way, family. He going to protect us all the way, family. Not half, family. With your mouth, will you curse or will you bless yourself? Now, all last week I ministered on this one, family, and we talked about the people, your people in your neighborhood. We talked about your family people. We talked about your, your co-workers and all they doing with their mouth is cursing themselves, family. I'm asking you here in the sanctuary in this day, what do you choose to do with your speech? What do you choose to do with your mouth, family? For you will either curse or bless your own self. It sounds like a damn shame, family. You probably ain't heard it in a while, family, but it's a it's a damn shame, family. But this is why all that stuff be happening to people. What does scripture have to say about it? When it goes well with the righteous, the city will rejoice. And when the wicked perish, there with there is jubilee. But the blessings of the up the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. You see how much damage you can cause to your own self by your mouth? Look at the wicked. The wicked sit up there and they talk bad about that city for, for, for so damn long. And they destroyed, they tarnished, and they turned the city into hell just by their speech. I'm talking about your individual life. It's so many different people. They complain and they curse on they, they can't They can't say anything good about their life. That's why nothing good happens. They're not willing to do any good and they're not willing to say anything good to happen to them. All they got is negativity. All they have is hatred. All they got is the bearings of them saying all this bad stuff and then watching all this stuff befall them, family. That's why your brother here in the sanctuary in this day, I'm asking you, what do you choose to do with your mouth? Either you can lift yourself up or you can tear yourself down, family. And you see them, family. They don't ever have nothing. They ain't never got enough. All this stuff is always happening. But if you listen to them, if you listen to them, they basically use their power for all that stuff bad to happen to them. It's a damn shame, family. It is a damn shame, family. So that's why your brother, I say to you, family, what do you choose to do with your mouth? You can either curse or bless your own self. What are you going to do? Me and your brothers and sisters out here in this world, we choose to bless ourselves, family. We choose to live blessed lives. We're going to speak nothing but good stuff about our future, our bodies, our houses, our family, our situation. That's all we're going to do, family. I'll tell you right now, you're going to piss a lot of people off, but it's worth it, family. You ain't got to you ain't got to get none of that bad stuff happening to you because you want to co-sign on their wickedness of their evil of their curses, family. You don't have to accept that. You don't have to take those things with you in your life. And the best suggestion that I can ever tell you is to separate yourself from those people because not all people can be your friends. Not all people can be your brothers and not all people can be your sisters. Only those who serve the real God can help you in life. Can't nobody else help you, family. Now, you already know that I'm going to tell you, God, he's the best help that you could ever have. But as far as your individual life and you going zone to get along, only God people is going to help you get along to get along, family. They're the only ones, family. 
It could be from the easiest things in the morning time, like, hi, how you doing? People who don't believe in God are not going to speak to you because they themselves don't have love and compassion in their heart. Only another child of God cares about your, your, self, your self-being, family. Your self-worth, family. Your actual existence, family. Other people who don't have faith and don't, they believe in a fake God, they don't care about nobody but their selves, family. Remember what your brother was preaching on? They serve a fake Jesus, family. And that fake Jesus allows them to give in to all the cruelty and all the disgusting of all the evil, of all the foul that is festering on that man's heart, family. That's in that woman's heart, family. The only people that can help us is children of God, family. The mother people is not going to try to help you like that, family. They're not, family. It's not even in them, family. So what was written? When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is jubilee. But the blessings of the upright... I'm sorry. By the blessings of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. What do you choose to do with the power that God has given you? I'm asking you, brother. I'm asking you, sister. Okay, let's move. I can put my initials on that. Let's get a side note from last week. (laughs) From last week, because I forgot the side note for the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Side note. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Side note. Yes, it is. We as children of the highest cannot get mad at who Yah chooses. If they... I'm sorry. I was in the light. If they stand with him, they will be blessed. If they walk away, they will fall. We cannot be mad at at who Yah chooses. We put in the work, but it is not our time. We have to be grateful that God, that Yah called our brothers and sisters out of the sickness of sin. Rejoice. So, you know, a lot of people, they see the blessings of God over people, how uh, over they, they, they lives. And they start getting jealous, family. They start getting so damn jealous, family. They be like, oh, God, why you won't bless me? And you going to bless Tyrone and Tyrone ain't put in no work. Oh, God, I've been sitting here putting in all this work and you ain't blessed me. We should just be grateful that God called them out of the darkness, family. We cannot get mad at God, at who God picks, family. You cannot get mad at who God chooses. You cannot get mad at who God chooses to lift up. And the majority of the people in this world will be a damn lie if they sit here today and said, I never seen God lift nobody up. I ain't never seen God favor on somebody life. I ain't never seen God bless nobody. They will be a damn lie, family. You know what I'm saying? But we and our lives, family, when we see the most high Yah blessing another man or woman, we cannot get jealous of that. We can't, we can't feel no type of jealousy inside of our heart to see God bless somebody. It's no different than when the, the good, the, when the bad son, he went out family, he, he took out, he said, daddy, well, you know, daddy, you know, farm life ain't for me, daddy. I, I, I can't do this, daddy. I can't be sitting out here on the farm. I don't want to raise no chickens, no goats. I I, I don't want to raise no, no water. I don't want to grow no watermelon, no cherries. I don't want to do that. Give me my money. Give me my dollar bills, and I'm going to go try my luck in the city. The son went to the city, family. He blew all his money, family. He blew all his money on all this different stuff, and he didn't even get anything out of it, family. He didn't get it. He blew all his friends that he made. They turned his back on them. People was kicking them out of places. He couldn't find no work. He was in that city begging, family, begging, family. He went from having it all to begging, family. The, the he went back home. He said to himself, he said, well, you know what? I ain't got no friends here. Don't nobody want to give me no job. I'm starving. I can go back to my father's house and I could be a hired servant and I could eat good. You know what I'm saying? I could have some good clothes on. And he went back, family. He went back to his father's house. And his older brother, he put in the time, family. He raised all his, his daddy goats. 
He raised all his cows. He planted all his corn. He planted all his wheat. Family, he was out there busting his butt, family. And the older brother was jealous at the fact that his father took the younger brother into his bosom and gave him all the other stuff all over again. The father said to the son, now, you know, half of every single thing that that is mine is yours. But I thought that your brother was dead out there in that world and we would never see him again. Rejoice. Be in jubilee that your brother has found himself all over again. That's you being mad at who God picks, family. We cannot be mad at whoever God d decides to deliver, family. And once more again. A lot of people would be a lie to me if they said they ain't never felt the feeling of jealousy, family. We, we cannot be mad at whoever God chooses to lift up or pick, family. Side note for the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Side note for the night. I know better than that, family. I don't even get mad. I'd be like, wow, God is blessing that person. I need to give me some blessings like that. I need to be doing what is they doing? You know what I'm saying? Whatever that brother and that sister doing, I'm going to start doing whatever they doing so God can shine on me like that. Ain't no jealousy up over here, family. Uh-uh. You can't be mad at God. And people get mad, family. They get mad. They get so mad, family, at that they can get a good word from God, but they don't like the messenger, family. That's who God picked, family, to deliver the message. They don't even want to get... Their lives could have been changed by the message that that messenger had to give. But they were so damn jealous and so damn envious of the messenger that they missed the damn blessing, family. We cannot be mad at who God picks, family. We cannot, family. We cannot. Now, the side note number two. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Side note. Yes, it is. Now, last week, I preached over it a lot, family. I really did. So I'm a I'm a I'm a vaguely go through it because I want to bring it to your remembrance. But I preached over it already. I feel very comfortable. I can even put my initials on it, family. Statues, commandments, laws, judgment, limitations will be carried. For this is what separates us from the heathen. A life of uncleanliness, defiled, def defiled the holy sanctuary, which is yourself. This is why Yah don't want us to follow other nations. God don't want us to be like all them other people and the things that they're doing. Brother, do you hear me, brother? Sister, are you hearing me? God doesn't want us to be like them because they are heathens, family. They do stuff that's unclean, family. Family, I could start pointing the finger at America and half of the stuff that she allows her that that goes on, family, the goings on that happened here in America or is, is defiled, family. It's unclean, family. Our father does not want us to be like the heathen nations, family. He wants us to keep his laws, his statutes, his judgments, his limitations, family, his holy commandments. You see all the other people? They live here, family. They say they love God and do whatever the hell they want to. That is a heathen, family. That is a heathen, family. It is, family. They're living a defiled, unclean life, family. But I feel very comfortable how I preached over it before. So I wanted to bring it in remembrance to your mind, family. I want you to keep your father's statues, his commandments, his laws, his judgments, his limitations. For us to be different than the heathen family for us to live a, a godly life that everything that we set ourselves is is sanctified family they desecrate their own selves family they really do their their sanctuary they desecrate it family they put in garbage and defilement and ailment inside just being just being part of the world and having a worldly mindset and thinking that certain things are okay but they're not family it is unclean family it is not good for us to do, family, and your father. And it's all basically rolls around his statutes of his commandments, of his laws, of his judgments, of his limitations. Going outside of that, you will defile your sanctuary, which is yourself, family, which will rely you to look like a heathen family. And we're supposed to be set apart, consecrated people of the most high God, his holy chosen set apart people, family. Side note, 
Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, man. Okay, last side note, and I'll get back into the, the rest that I have on this page. I thought that I would be able to complete the whole front to back, but I see that I ran out of time, family, because we're already an hour up here in the sanctuary. I'm My bad. My bad. I tried to get through all of it, but, you know, you serve a good, great God, and he give me the power. He give me the strength. He give me my allotted time, and I'll just be back, family. Side note number three. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Side note. Yes, it is. Now, when you judge Yah, you shame him. It is not up to a man or a woman to judge Yah. It is our job to stand in agreement in his mercy of his will, not in contrary to his very thoughts. Family, anytime you find something that God is doing that you don't like, you just judged him, family. You just shame God himself, family. We are not supposed to ask people without faith, family. They be judging God, family. They really be, well, you know, God should have did it like this. And you know, I would have, I would have. So what you think you God now, brother? You think you better than the almighty? Oh, well, I would have did it like this. So what, sister? You think you better than God? You think that your judgment is better than God? That's what you think? No, my brothers and sisters. We have to stand in agreement of anything that he's doing. Whatever his will is, we agree to that. Whatever his mercy is. We agree to that. Whatever his judgment is, we agree to that. We're not going to sit up here and be, can I say it, a funky foul person, family, trying to judge God, family, for real, family. There's so many of them that are around you and that will give into that spirit to where they will judge God themselves as if they can do a better job than his greatness, family. And they cannot, family. And they will never be able to do not even a pinky ring, family. Not even a nail, family. Not even a, a hair follicle of all the great things that he has set forth in this universe for us to enjoy, family. Nothing, family. So when you stand in contrary to what God wants or his will, you judge God, family. You actually judge and bring shame on him, family. He's watching you now. His eyes are, did you just shame me? Boy, did you just shame? What, what did you just say? Did you just shame me? He doesn't like that, family. In our lives, family, and all our goings on or whatever that can might happen to us, family, his will, family, we're not supposed to go against that. We're not supposed to doubt that. We're not supposed to argue against that. We're not supposed to stand contrary. We are supposed to be aligned to whatever his will is, family. We're not going to judge God, family, by nothing that he is doing, nothing that he has done, nothing that he has said or nothing that he wants to put forth in this world. For we can never do a greater job than what he has already done a million years ago, family. We're not going to judge him. Don't be like our other brothers and sisters out there in the world who would judge God, family, and bring shame on him and then wonder why he want to curse them. Wonder why he wants to choke them. Wonder why he wants to slap the taste out of their mouth. Wonder why he wants that plane to fall on their head, family. Don't be like them. Don't be like your other brothers and sisters. We Don't have that mindset, my brother. Don't have that stand in alliance to whatever his will is. He allowed that to happen because he wanted that to happen. We are not speaking without faith. We're speaking with full faith, family, in him, family. Don't judge him. God, family. It's a reason why he does what he does. It's not even us. It's not up to a man or a woman to understand him like that. We just got to figure out why he did it. Now, why did he do it? But don't judge him in it. Side note for the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Don't be judging y'all. Side note for the night. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we did that one. Okay, now, what type of man or woman are you? So I'm asking you a question, family. There's only so many different types of people, family. According to the will of God, there's only so many different type of people. It's not a lot of different. It's not like it's a hundred thousand different types of people, family. It's not, family. It's only a certain amount of of people and their characteristics and their behaviors on how they act, family. So I'm asking you today, 
What type of brother are you? What type of sister are you? Let's see what scripture I have to say about it. A terror bearer, a, a, a tale bearer, a revealer of secrets, but he who is faithful counsels a matter. So what kind? Family, you got the tail bearer, you got the, the reviling of secrets, or you have a faithful person of God that's going to counsel the matter. That means they're going to give you a good solution. After they hear your problem, they're going to hear what you said and your troubles and your problems. Then they're going to counsel you with a good counsel to give you a good way out, to give you good things out. Or you have those people, all they got is lies. All they got is tribulation. All they got is scoffing and mocking and reviling people's secrets. What type of person are you, family? What type, family? Are you going to counsel those who need your help and give them a good way out of it? Are you too busy telling everybody's business and spreading lies, family? There is only so many different types of characteristics of a man or a woman. The, the uniqueness of the individuality of their soul. There's only so many different type family. And I'm asking you here today, what type are you? Let's move forward to the, another one, the next one, because that was a question that I am asking you, family. According to the will and the word of God, what type of man or woman are you? Let's move to the next one. Now, I covered this one already, but, you know, these are precept upon precept, concept upon concept, structure upon structure, law to law, command to command, family. Their problems is their problems. Why do they have to be yours? So I'm asking you, family. I'm asking you, family. Their problems is their problems. Why do you want to make their problems your problems? Because if you do, you will always have to help that person, family. We talked about the brother on the couch. We talked about the sister in the attic. We talked about the brother living in the garage. Family, these people are so bad, family. They will try to make you be accomplished of their sin and their crimes, family. And we're not just talking about their sin to God. We're talking about their crimes as people. They will try to get you to go in on that too, family. So I'm asking you, family, why why do you want their problems to be your problems? If you put yourself in the mix of the, the vipers and the snakes, the jackals, the hyenas, and the leopards, family, you're going to have to suffer with them, family. What does scripture have to say about it? He who is surely for a stranger will suffer, but one who hates being shortly is secure. What does shortly means? It means you taking on somebody else's responsibility, family. That's what it means. Shortly, what does shortly mean? It means you care about their problems and their problems are bad and their bad stuff is going to happen to you and you constantly going to have to try to help them, family. It is not. What, what did your brother say at the beginning of this? Not everybody can be your friend. Not everybody is going to help you. But why are you making everybody problems your own family? He is, he who is shortly for a stranger will suffer. But one who hates being shortly, shortly is secure family. You don't have to. Now, this is the week to help. I'm not asking you to put on, I'm not asking you to take other people's problems and put them on your plate so you can have to suffer with them. Uh-uh, family. Uh-uh, that's not help, family. That's suffering with them people, family. Those are two different things. We're not talking about the same. Jehosa, I thought you said you wanted me to help. I thought you said that this is the week to help. It is the week to help. But we show sure not taking nobody's problems, family. What did the scripture say? He who is shortly for a stranger will suffer. You will suffer, sister, if you take on your homegirl problems and call them your own. You always trying to help her get out of them situations. You're going to be in that sinking boat right with her. It's a hole in the boat and it's slowly sinking and both of y'all in it. It could have just been her in the boat sinking, but you want to climb in the boat with your sister and sink with her. There is no shame in not trying to help everybody in their problems, family. It's not no shame in that, family. God did not say that we have to help all them people and you know that they're in trouble, family. We're not talking about help. We're not talking about assisting a person that has come down on their luck or come through some misfortune. We're talking about people who have problems that have put themselves in that problem. They're going to have to deal with it. You don't have to make their problems your own. Okay, I can put my initials on that.
Because once more again, a lot of my brothers and sisters, they heard what I said. They heard what I said, family. They heard what God had to say about it, but they still going to put themselves in the quicksand with their homie, family. They is, family. They going to put themselves in the quicksand with their homie, and they both going to sink, family. It's a damn shame, family. It's a damn shame, family. Let's move for the next one. I only got two more family and I'm going to go ahead and get out of the, the sanctuary for tonight. Just like I said, we'll be back. You want to do something for your brother Israel? Come meet us at the nine o'clock prayer hour. Come meet us at the 10 o'clock prayer hour. If you can't get to the nine o'clock, come meet us at the 11 o'clock. If you can't get to the nine, come meet us at the 12. If you can't get to the 11 family, we pray all night long family. One of your brothers and one of your sisters missed the nine o'clock family, but they're going to be there at 11. We are in spirit and you will not be alone family. Come be in spirit and give your father your heart through your prayers of your obedient, of your submissive spirit. Come submit yourself with your brothers and sisters. Now, your good will pay, will pay, will always pay off when you need it the most. Can you imagine that, family? All of your, all of your good that you do is going to pay you off in the time when you need it, family. Them people up over there, they ain't got no goodness in their heart and they damn sure ain't trying to do no good for nobody else. They can't even give them no compassion, family. Can't give them no serenity. Can't give them no love. Can't give them no understanding. Can't be generous with their heart, family. So they don't have any good things stacked up, family. You do good. It's going to come. Remember how we were saying, family. Everybody needs to be saved. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come a point to where everybody has to be saved, family. But you and your good works of your good deeds is going to pay you off when you need them the most. If you don't have any good that you are doing, it's going to be a point of time to where you need some good to happen for you. You're going to be in a rut. You're going to be in a situation and you need some assistance. You need some help. But other people, they don't have any good things that they were doing. So that help is not going to roll over, family. It's like a cell phone and rolling minutes, family. It always rolls around. This life is full circle, family. Everything returns. It's like a clock, family. You see the clock be at 12 o'clock and it moves from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, back to 12 again. That is your good works, my brother. That is your good works, sister. You did the good works at 3 o'clock. You didn't know by nine o'clock you was going to need some help. You know what I'm saying? But it still rolls back around. Them people up over there, they got the most coldest. They the most stiff necked people. Black people. <laughs> That's what your father said. You can't get mad at me. They the most stiff necked people you have ever seen in your life. They don't have any compassion. They don't have any peace. And they're not trying to help anybody. It was 12 o'clock, family. That, that sister up over there, she didn't do no good all day, family. By that next of that 11 o'clock, she needed some goodness to happen for her. But she didn't have any goodness stacked up. So how would she expect something good to happen for her? And she still needed the good stuff to happen for her in her life. She was just asked out, family. She was asked out, family. I'm sorry, family. She ran up out of luck, family. She didn't have the family. She, she, she caught a flat tire on the freeway and somebody could have helped her, but she didn't have any get anybody good that she was doing for those people to come back and do some good for her. She will. We will need a time in our lives to be safe. Everybody needs to be saved at a, a certain point, family. And if you ain't got no good stored up. If you ain't got no good out here in this world that you're doing, if you ain't got no love that you're giving, you're not going to give it back. But in this given sense in time, it always shows up when you need it the most. What, what did I write, family? Your good will always pay off when you need it the most. It's going to come a time when that brother needs some help. He needs something, family. It's something, family. Something's going on. Something's going to happen. And he needs some type of help. But that brother stood up over there with his funk stank attitude and he did not want to help nobody. He gets no help, family. He gets no compassion. He gets no one to lift him up. What does the scripture have to say about it? A gracious woman retains her honor, but a ruthless man retains riches. The merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles 
his own flesh. What do you mean, Jehosa? What do you mean, Jehosa? Your good will pay off when you need it the most, family. Listen to what scripture is saying. A gracious woman retains honor when she needed the most, family. But a ruthless man retains riches. What, what do you want, family? You want to be like them people and only care about money and want money and think that money is going to save them? That's not going to save them, family. The, the, the merciful man does good for his own soul. For you to be saved, you're going to have to do it for your own self as well, family. You're helping those people so you can be helped yourself. If you're not willing to help those people, you won't be helped yourself family but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh if you're not willing to help other people you will suffer for that you will be in trouble you will have a time of need and nobody will come to redeem you family nobody no one will come to redeem you let's go back to the top a gracious woman retains her honor but a ruthless man retains riches the merciful man does good for his own soul but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh that man didn't want to help that sister wasn't trying to help nobody but it's going to come a time when she needs to be saved she will not be redeemed she will not be helped she will not be lifted up and she will be crying and god will not even listen to her family because she already had the time she already had everything she needed to be helped in the in the, in the first place what did the scripture say uh, the merciful man does good for his own soul for his own self. You're helping others to be help yourself. Okay, I feel very comfortable on how I preached over that. I really do, family. Some people, they won't get it because they don't want to get it because they don't want to have the faith. Last one, and your brother is going to get out the sanctuary for tonight. Before I bless you and get out of here for tonight. There is only a handful of evil men and a boatload of wicked people. Can you imagine that, family? I could have put on there, family... A whole world filled with sinners, family. But I, I want you to think of, of, about the statement that I put forth. There is only a handful of evil men and a boatload of wicked people. W wickedness is different than evil, family. If you're wicked, you have a chance, family. If you're evil, family, I don't know about that, family. I don't know of no redemption for you like that, family. I think it's like it's like walking over to the dark side, family. I don't think that you can walk back to the light after that. If you're wicked, family, you just be doing evil stuff, family. You got a chance, family. But if you're evil, family, evil and wicked are two different things, family. You'll be like, what do you mean, Jehoshaphat? What do you mean? They both do bad. Yes, but one of them can be saved if they come out of it. Evil people, it, uh, uh, a real evil man is going to be evil. A real evil woman is going to be evil to the day that they die, family. The wicked have a chance, family. They have a chance to redeem themselves through their own actions of repentance, family, of turning from their wicked ways and trying to live upright and fearing the Most High God, worshiping the most high God, praising the most high God. The evil will never, family. What does scripture have to say about it? A righteous leads to righteousness leads to life. So he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. What do you mean, Jehosa? What do you mean? There is only a handful of evil men and women, but there's a boatload of wicked people, and they will do wickedness to the day that they die. Family, he will do evil to the day that they die, but the wicked people have a chance to come out of that life. What does scripture say? As a right, a righteousness leads to life. So he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Your cousins and them hootlums on the block and them gangsters, they're going to be gangsters until they die. They're going to be hootlums till they die. They're going to be liars until they die. They're going to be thieves until they die. And then they're going to be judged for it, family. That's what the scripture says. Now, all my brothers and sisters, go ahead and throw your hands up to Zion. Father, we come before you humble in this day. Father, we thank you for the lives that you have given us. We thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you for your mercy. We bless your will, Father. We thank you for your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. We also call him Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, for you are worthy. Father, I ask that you bless the fruits of their mind. I ask that you keep my brothers and sisters' mind 
witty, seven steps ahead of any evil priest evil principality of wickedness that will try to befall them in their lives. Father, I ask that you keep them strong on their feet, being able to adapt to any situation that might befall them. Father, I ask that you bless the fruits of their body. I ask that you heal any pain, any sickness, any disease that is in their body and give them the strength of their younger days when they used to run and free in joy and true jubilee and on your green earth. Father, I ask that you bless the fruits of their body of all sickness or illness. Father, I ask that you even give them back the youth and the skin of their baby years. For all my brothers and sisters who have never felt your presence, Father, I ask that you knock them down with your love wherever you, wherever they might be in this world. For them to understand the presence of the forever living God. For all my brothers and sisters who have never felt your presence on this earth of what your what your love is. I ask that you knock them down, Father. I ask that you knock them down and reveal yourself to them. Father, I ask that you bless their sons, their daughters, their husbands, their wife. They complete household covered in the blood of the precious lamb. Father, I ask that you send down all of your protection all of your mercy, all of your grace, all of your blessings, all of your favor be appointed to them and their household for their families. For we love you, Father, and we submit to you. Father, the love and the peace and the joy of Yeshua that you have put inside of our heart, Father, I ask that it be a burning flame that draws so many different people closer to your truth, to fasten it close to their heart and hold to them to the day that they die until they're into your presence, for you are a great God. Father, we bless your will. We bless your judgment. And we bless all the things that you do in this world, for you are a great God, and there is none other. All glory be given unto you, Father, for you are the only one who is worthy. All glory be given to Yah. All glory be given to Yah. And thank you to all my brothers and sisters who have prayed for me as well now. Brothers and sisters, until next time. Until next time, family. I got to get out of here for tonight. But all glory be given to Yah, for he is the only one who is worthy. Blessed be his name forever.